at least once between the months of October and April, the STEM mall, that is a steam engine and a travelling thrashing machine, would come to mess ferns and crafts to thrash the rocks of corn. The steam engine was replaced by tractor power around about the 1930s and 40s. The purpose of thrashing was to separate the grain for the stray. In order for the steam mill to work right, it not about 13 to 15 men. Almost no place had that amount of staff, so the neighbours would all lend a hand. The thrashing mill would de all the ferns in the neighbourhood and then move to another district. Men could therefore be at a buckle mills in the same wick. The shaves were forked onto the top of the mill. The binder twine around each chef was cut with a louser special knife. He or she would then pass the cut chef to the feeder. He would place the chef, grain end first, into the revolving drum. This drum would separate the grain for the stray. The mill usually I broke down at least eins per yoke. This was a time when the tempers of the farmer and the mill lads could almost sewer milk. The most common bracktoon was a slip into a belt. Castor oil was usually poured on. This stopped it slipping. After a guid clart of castor oil, the mill got yoked again. The grain would come out the back of the mill and be bagged off at a weight of half a quarter. Each bag would be carried to a cart or carried by one man to a corn loft some 40 to 50 metres from the mill. This job required fit, strong men. The straw would be delivered out the back of the mill. The straw was used for feeding and bedding the cattle over winter. The steam engine had to be constantly supplied with water. This task usually was given to the young children about the farm. All water had to be carried by bucket from the farm well. The women of the farm had to supply the men with a cup of tea in the morning and afternoon and a two-course lunch. A typical lunch would be chicken broth and a steam pudding. The preparation for these catering jobs started many days before the mill arrived. This assignment will report on rural life in the early 1900s. This type of farming activity, which took place up to the 1940s on most rural farms in Scotland, was one which was very labour intensive. A typical family farm of a hundred hectares during the early 1900s would have had at least two hired men employed, plus the farmer and his family. The hired men would have stayed in tied houses on the farm. Families were usually much larger than they are today, and the rural population would have mostly all worked in agriculture, either directly or indirectly. When we see the technology used during this time period, we can often see it as being very old-fashioned and primitive. However, the technology of the 1900s featured on Scottish farms was state-of-the-art at that time. The women folk in rural areas were very much part of the workforce. The food eaten during this time was mostly cooked by her. The children would have gone to the local school for their primary education and would have been given a school bicycle to cycle four to five miles to the secondary school.
Lors des pauses thé, pendant l'heure du déjeuner, le bavardage se concentre autour des sujets tels que taquiner les jeunes hommes pour savoir avec quelle jeune fille ils sortiraient. Le bâtage et la production du grain étant le sujet du jour, ainsi que les fermes dans les environs. La pause thé étant terminée, le travail recommence. As this sample clip shows, Carne Heritage Productions can supply to you customized clips in various linguistic formats to fit the stage outcomes and objectives of the Curriculum for Excellence.